what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel today for another review well you see zero so you must know what pipeline we about to go now today and we have a special guest but nonetheless we have a banger on our hands because we're here to talk about the new film in violent in a violent nature excuse me uh which will be coming out by ifc so in theaters may 31st and then releasing on shutter later this year where it made its world premiere this year at sundance film festival so yeah a in a violent nature a film we're very very excited to talk about but nonetheless special guest my brother clap the ceo of wearecritics.com joins us to talk all things man let's start right there what are some of the words that y'all have been using to describe this film explosive uh, <laughs> explosive yep explosive okay. jacked up beautiful uh humble is another one let me get mm. one more and um dangerous i guess i'm gonna <laughs> go with that <laughs> okay. oh and classic i'm gonna throw classic in there also okay, okay. uh go i got that. uh dis disturbing um uh i'm gonna say intimate mm -hmm. and uh it is shot beautifully i was looking yeah. at that shot beautifully i'll go one word and it's brutal it's easily just brutal um but nonetheless i mean that just lets you all know um as we are three uh, avid moviegoers that uh us using all these different descriptors just lets you kind of know the type of ride you're about to go on in this film um so uh i know myself and clep we got a chance to check this out um virtually but yep. zero i gotta go to you because with everything we've been talking about thus far with the descriptives and 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 clep even uh mentioning uh, uh, uh aspect of the production you saw this in theaters so i actually did not see this in theaters let me tell you the story okay okay so, <laughs> i was about to say because you pretty much told me you were going to see this in theaters it was a big screen uh but it was not in a movie theater so ifc and shutter had partnered up with rooftop films which okay. is a nonprofit here in new york city and they do um a lot lots of uh, low cost and free screenings outside for New Yorkers. Mm. So they paired up and they decided to have this screening of In a Violent Nature on Governor's Island. Mm. Okay. And okay. so, you know, this film, it takes place in the woods. The whole thing is in the woods. We're getting really classic with, you know, the summer camp slasher archetype. Unfortunately, or actually, fortunately for me, unfortunately for Johnny, I live in a super metropolitan area. I live smack in the middle of New York City. So I'm fine. Okay, I will be just fine. So Shutter, IFC, and Rooftop Films come together and they say, how do we make these New Yorkers actually scared? So for those of you who have never been to Governor's Island, it was actually my first time, but it's a big public park on an island. Oh. And, yep, so they put us all on that ferry, uh, maybe seven to 10 minutes later, I'm in the wilderness. And I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not safe anymore. And it was a little bit of overcast day. It was not quite raining, but it was drizzling a little bit, but it all added to the ambiance of it. We had the big blow up screen and we watched in the middle of the park at sundown, which was really crazy. The, the park actually closes at sundown. So we took the ferry there and we were kind of like trapped. Like we had to stay on the island until the film was over. Um, but it was a it was an amazing, awesome, immersive experience, you know, especially to to really get you into you know, like I'm, I'm very used to being in, in close spaces. I live in, in the city, you know, but now mm -hmm. there's, there's infinite places around me for Johnny to be hiding. Um, it was a great experience. <laughs> and there was a talk back afterwards with the cast of the film. Um, the director was not there, unfortunately, but we did have the actor who plays Johnny and he did put the suit on after the right, Q and A right. was over and he chased us all back to the ferry on the way back to the city. <laughs> And it was oh, yes. oh my god oh my god yeah shout out to ifc man shout out yeah. that's a great market oh my tactic. god it's super jelly i forgot we got a review to do i'm getting here thinking like how we how we get to do that next time <laughs> um but while you're at it while you at it you might as well 
give either the synopsis is overall what this film is about. You mentioned Johnny a few times. People don't know who Johnny is, but they will know very they soon. Will. Oh, will they know? All right. Yeah. So this film follows Johnny, actually, who we're yeah. let's think about it as the Friday the 13th archetype. We have a this poor little kid. We don't get to see this, but we we learn it in the film in its lore in the first third. But we have a story about a kid who's at summer camp. Um, something very tragic happens to him at summer camp. And granted, this is about 60 years ago, um, 60 years after this, whatever the hell happened to poor little Johnny, he comes back for his revenge in his undead form, seeking, you know, wreaking havoc on new campers in the same area. So we're not reinventing the wheel here at all. Um, it's actually probably the most classic slasher archetype that you could ever have um but the thing that makes this film super unique is that you are tethered to johnny as opposed to tethered to the campers tethered to the victims you know getting to know uh their little quips and their archetypes and you know this couple is they're in the cabins you know doing the do you know what that means we don't get any of that here we're really just seeing everything i'm hesitant to say from johnny's point of view because we don't actually get his point of view but we are as the audience we are tethered to the killer, which is really interesting because we all want to know, okay, well, what happens to the bodies after the death? What is he going to do with him? What about all this time that he spends idling? Is he stalking? Is he planning? Is he just kind of waiting around? Is, is he critically thinking? We never get to know those answers. So now we do. And it's a hell of a ride and gorgeous at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Claire, before you get in, I want to say, yeah, because a, a couple of things just to make sure our, 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 our listeners or viewers picked up on it is that following our slasher our killer here is uh not something we get often if at any um and and, and this different vantage point absolutely brings the uniqueness to the film because as you mentioned they did not reinvent the wheel um and and as horror has really started to become more and more creative telling different stories hitting so many different and new subgenres. when you go back to just the good old classic slasher you have to sit back and say, well, what are you going to do that we haven't seen before? And a lot of people really haven't been able to do so. And, yeah. there, and this movie took some very small but subtle liberties to really stand out. And the one thing I want to talk about really quickly is, I mean, anybody who watch any of my reviews know, like, the biggest part of the production um, that I, I always emphasize on or I start with is the score. The film, and, and it's so funny because I just saw it on Instagram, there was a post that said about what's the most iconic core score and obviously there is a lot and 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 folks tend to lean towards halloween which i would agree mm -hmm. um but what happens when there is no score mm -hmm. how do you <laughs> supplement that very impactful yet iconic aspect of a film with no score and i will say that they dropped the score and enhanced the sound mixing that the bone crushing skin Dang. pilling <laughs> I'm, I'm having a little ptsd moment right now <laughs> on a thousand um so i really 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 enjoyed that I, again as zero said it uses the same the same blueprint that we've seen in, in so many others but they took very small liberties of its own to really stand on his own two feet uh, to make this Canadian slasher horror film uh, one that you don't want to miss. Now, Clep, for you, what were some mm -hmm. of the things that really stood out for you? What were some of the moments that that really got you wanting to talk about it? Talk, talk about talk about those moments. Well, I just want to go back to what you were saying about like the subtleness and like the you know the quietness. And I think you know, shout out to John Krasinski because I think he let us know that sometimes what's not heard can be the most unsettling. And just following this character, Johnny, around, uh, one of the biggest things that I really enjoy about this as a story lover is being able to learn the story via Johnny. So, like, as Zero was saying, like, we're, it is kind of like following the perspective, but not following the perspective of the killer. But in order to really grasp the storyline, you got to kind of pay attention to what's happening around Johnny rather than watching the cast you know, portray these characters and tell storyline. So I, that was what was so fresh for me and just kind of being in the space of the killer and just 
hearing things that were happening and saying, oh, okay, I learned so much just in that opening shot about what was going to happen and what's ha what's supposed to happen. So that was like the big standout to me, just being able to follow the story from a different standpoint versus just yeah. watching a movie that we've seen a hundred thousand times. Mm -hmm. so that's straight up. <laughs> yeah. I, I love I, that stuff. I love that stuff. And Najir, you and I have had this conversation before, but movie lovers, period, but especially horror fans, we're <laughs> no dummies, right? We, yeah. we can pick up on what you're putting down. So when movies try to like feed us the plot, I find it a little offensive because you don't have to, you don't have to spoon feed it to us. We can figure mm -hmm. it out. And this yeah. is a great example of allowing the audience to just figure it out for themselves um, in a very unique way, because we're not, we're not getting blatant anything. We're getting the entire plot and the conflict and what is happening in the film through its um, atmosphere. Yeah. The, the dialogue, if there's any, it's through the atmosphere. It's not at yeah. each other. We're we're just kind of not a part of the conversation, but we're kind of over here in a corner with Johnny, and we're just soaking it up and and putting things together that way, which I appreciate because there's too many horror films, especially this year, y'all, that <laughs> talk to us like we're dumb, and <laughs> we need to be given a step by step instruction list on how to digest this story. When really we're very capable of doing it ourselves and chris nash with this one and in a violent nature is clearly aware of that and it's very smart mm -hmm. yeah and i listen the one thing for me as a as an avid uh movie goer is uh and, and especially in horror is you know particular casting choices tend to give you an indication of how the story is going to go um yeah. you know we could just talk about scream here you put jenna ortega in the film you're like okay she's good is Jenna Ortega because you look at the, the the list. She's like, oh, there's clearly a gap between your stars and mm -hmm. your other folks. And I, I, I'm 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 just speaking in generally, so I'm not nothing against that cast because uh, that cast is stacked actually. Um, but nonetheless, you could tell like who the film is focused on and who potentially is going to be that protected cat. The reason why this film works so good for me is because whether you are a person who likes to add to commentary or you're just sitting with your seatbelt on, you're just ready to see what ride you're going to go on here. Coming from Johnny's perspective, to me, as I like to say, um, as my dear friend uh, Michael Myers has had to tell cancel culture more times over and over, he's an equal opportunist when it comes down to killing. Yeah. So yeah. he didn't just kill gay people. He didn't just want to <laughs> kill kids. The old white man. He said anybody could get it, you know? Yeah. This is the clearest depiction of anybody could get because everybody is on the table. You can't even mm -hmm. look at a particular cast name and say, oh, they're 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 good. Oh, that may be our final girl. So, no, no, no. Everybody can get it. And mm -hmm. and I love yeah. that unsettlety. And as you mentioned, the atmospheric core, because now you like, this is re legitimately, and as we saw pretty early in this film, um, it doesn't even matter to what point in the film, they can turn the brutality up to a thousand right now if they want it and they yeah, did yeah. they was like oh i'm not yeah, waiting yeah. to the final act to give you the, the worst uh -huh. killer you'll ever see you can have it right now mm -hmm. here you yeah. go for breakfast um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing i will say is uh going through johnny's perspective i loved um just how we got to understand the trauma the backstory and then who is this supernatural killing machine right now mm -hmm. and i love how they develop the power set throughout the film. There's a particular part of the film where Johnny's on one side of the lake and his next targets uh. are on the other. And I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at the screen like, so what are you about to do, do, sir? Because yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure you, uh, I'm, I'm checking the box here. I'm like, I don't, I don't think you could. Oh, you, oh, oh, you can. Okay, excuse me. I'll sit back and let you do what you do. Right. And I also, but, I also thought that the film did a really funny job of saying, just in case y'all did not think I was about that life, I'm going to make sure that this one's the worst one you see right now, just for oh, that. But I love, I, I love that. I love the perspective and how you you learn through the film grows. Mm -hmm. It's a great. And film. then like it constantly puts a spin on things, like was there was saying, like things that we think we've already seen, because that's straight out of the Jason book. But like mm -hmm. different, <laughs> yes. still different. But like something that like we knew, we knew 
something like that might happen, but no way. Like, what? Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, nah. it's so clever. And I was having this conversation um, on my podcast with my co-host because we had a friend of ours. A What's that podcast, podcast called, by the way? Oh, that podcast is called Blurdy Massacre. You can catch it wherever <laughs> you get your podcast fix, okay? Um, so we had our friend Die Hard Diva on, who's a Twitch streamer. And she plays lots of Dead by Daylight, uh, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, all that kind of stuff. And we had this great discussion about how the horror movie industry and the horror game industry, they don't really be talking like that. And it's crazy because we're all cut from the same cloth, you know? And I feel like in a violent nature, it really is the happy medium between um, horror movies and horror video games. Because y'all know, because I'm sure you play horror games yeah. as well. This feels like we're playing a horror game in third yeah. person. Yeah. It's not the POV. We are literally playing this game in third person and we're following Johnny around. Also... You know, Najir and I love to talk about that good sound design. We don't have a score, which is kind of a bummer because I'm imagining what it could be like in my head, but it's definitely not necessary. But in its absence, we're turning up the sound design with the bones breaking and the skin peeling and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, the editor let us know in the talk back that they actually brought on uh, video game Foley artists to do that work. Yeah. And that's why it sounds like you're playing freaking Mortal Kombat. Because they're really getting into the the bones crushing, and you know this is why we need to get these these two industries to talk a little bit more. Because when they come together, we're creating some stuff that we have never seen, and this is a very old genre. I appreciate the perspective. That's so. I'm a huge Dead by Daylight fan, and mm -hmm. I understand the and obviously who isn't a Mortal Kombat fan, mm -hmm. and the fatalities right. of Mortal Kombat. So I think we need to just go right to that point. Is some of the killings you all are going to see in this film is uh, Mortal Kombat Injustice ish. Yes. Um, yes. And then, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know about you all. I don't have that much time to, to put into gaming nowadays, but I know when I do game, I, I know why I'm going to game and the, 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 the fatalities in those games are must see, must have, <laughs> must do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that we get them, which I would love to have asked Chris Nash, uh, writer director, if yeah. these if these deaths were named, because man mm. oh man. <laughs> so, um, for for you, Clap, the fatalities is what we're going to call them. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and as much as you watch and as much as you consume, I mean, where do you, where do you rank where you see what you've seen in these films amongst all the films you've seen? Listen, this Johnny gives Jason a run for his money, like Hell hands yeah. down. Because when we talk about certain deaths in the movie, when it comes to slasher, most people tend to go to Jason or 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 Michael. But the stuff going on in this is like, yo, it's like right out of the book, but br more brutal. Like mm -hmm. they they definitely up the ante as far as like I imagine a sequel. I don't even know what what they could even possibly do that will outdo what they did in this like I, just hands down like the the best kills i would probably rank this yeah it's like a strong eight eight point five nine for me <laughs> listen out of all time that's pretty damn good i'm gonna say something controversial and i'm gonna say that jason walks so johnny could sprint <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I feel. You know, I, I I think they're gonna happen in October this year, but the Chainsaw Awards for this year have not happened yet. And best kill, it's in here. Oh, it's yeah. in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah. Again, huge day by daylight fans. So if you watch if you if you know the game, then you know you get put on the meat hooks. Um, and pretty much you just get sat on them and you wait till your homies come and uh get you off the hooks or you die. And I honestly have just been so conditioned that that's all me hooks was used for. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, were you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I want to say this too about um, uh, Johnny's actor, Rye, uh, Rye Barrett. Barrett. Barrett, excuse me. Yeah. If you look at his body of work, and I've seen some of his film over the last few years, I got to say that if, if, we knew him. He would probably sit right here on this podcast or review and talk with us because you, there's a sense of appreciation you can tell for the horror genre from his previous works. And the I almost want to say the fun, but almost like the bucket list to be able to be 
a slasher. And I, I said mm. this in, in, in another conversation about like, if you consumed horror um, as a kid, you either thought about what would it like to be in this scenario, to be the final girl, or to be the killer itself. And I, I don't think it's intrusive thoughts, but I mean, everybody picks up a knife at a point and you think it's so synonymous to think Michael Myers, whether how you pulling it out the thing or how you're looking at it. It's just, yeah. it's just synonymous. It's iconic, you know? And I think when you are an actor, when you think about some of the dream roles and possibilities, you have to say like, man, it'd be crazy if I could just be that type of person. Mm -hmm. And I think like from Chris and, and Rye's, uh efforts in this that I believe there are two fans that came together to really put out something um, that they've appreciated their appreciation for the genre, but their own spin, feel, and take on it, even though they made minor tweaks, which to me were monumental movements and, and changes that really makes it stand on its own. I just want to say that Ryan's performance in this is so good because um, we get these long shots and sometimes in, in cinema, long shots are not good. Sometimes you need to yank yeah. the camera into another direction. I think me and Clint was talking about something we saw recently where they just overdid it on long shots. And you're just like, mm -hmm. editing board, what you doing here? But these were so <laughs> purpose. I mean, they, they they had so much purpose to it because you you started to learn more about the character, the mannerisms, how he saw and, and heard. Um, I just think that like his 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 performance in this not only has me on board for a sequel. But I, I'm just a fan now. I want to see him in more roles, and I want to see how much more he's going to contribute to this genre. Because coming in, doing the slasher, and, and outside of him is art. Those are the two big ones right now yeah, in, in the yeah. industry. That I, you, when uh, this younger generation, I think we'll be talking about these two. Mm -hmm. um, you can just tell a sense of like pride people take in some of these roles instead of it just being the gig that they got. And I think he did such a fantastic job from beginning to end and really making us believe everything with this character, Johnny. Um, so this, this hats off to the, to the work with, with him and um, uh, and Chris. They 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 absolutely got one with this. You, you got to shout out uh, the cinematographer on that too, man. P P.S. Dirks, man. Like, let's talk about. Can we just talk a little bit about like the the depth of field, like the the shots when we're just following him, like where it really looks like a video game, and you're just walking through the woods trying to you know find find a place or find a weapon like those are some of the most standout long shots for me i'm just like i'm stunned i'm watching it like what is this guy gonna do next like what where is he going what's going on like it's mm -hmm. shout out to pierce man <laughs> yeah yeah uh zero anything else in this film that needs to be discussed that we haven't covered or any particulars that uh should instantly drive our audience to go see this in theaters what I will say is this is a film that I'm going to be real. If you miss it in the theaters, it's okay. Just make sure that when you watch it at home, your volume is all the way up <laughs> and it is, it is necessary to be sitting. If you're not going to be sitting in a theater, you have to be sitting on the couch with friends because this is a reaction bait movie they yeah. want you to react so bad and i promise you you will it's not gonna hit the same if you know i, I can't imagine being alone on the couch watching this and just <laughs> screaming to myself you know it's it, it takes a village it really does um but one line that i have to mention that i wrote it down like immediately in my notes as i'm watching this is i could never imagine that violence could be so humble and that's a really confusing thing to think about <laughs> until you see this film the highs are ridiculously high. The lows are calm and serene and beautiful. And I would never expect that those two, those two, you know, polar opposites of the spectrum could be so linked together. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I promise you, it's nothing like you have ever seen before. So please make some noise for this. You know, if you're one of those horror heads who's around for the Chainsaw Awards, you're going to want to make some noise for this one because I'm telling you, Best Kill is in there. It's in there. Mm -hmm. Go see this movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Clap, any final words for you on this one? Yeah. Um, I mean, just to bounce off of what Zero's saying, like, <clears throat> definitely, this is definitely going to be 
one of those classics uh, that is definitely going to make noise and make waves the same way Art the Clown did um, as new horror that's out there. It gives so many nods to what we know, but it's its, its own thing. Um, may, just please see this. I don't care. Like she said, I don't care if it's a theater. Just make sure when you do, you set the tone. You, you, you do it right. You do it right when you watch this because there's a lot of things that you could pay attention to. You got to listen. You got to like focus in on this and just take the ride and you'll enjoy it so much more. I promise you. I promise you. Yeah. In a violent nature, man. It's, it's definitely on my list of like go to horrors now. Right with oh, the first yeah. strangers, right with uh, Art the Clown, Terrifier. It's up there now. Well said. I know I spent a lot of time talking about the director, writer, and our, our lead in uh, Ride, but. Uh, definitely shout out to everybody that came together to put this film because even our victims, uh, they gave us a lot of um, a lot of almost this sounds kind of messed up, but al almost a lot of self self deserve reactions. There were some people <laughs> just like, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, no, every everybody played their part into making this film work. Uh, it did release at Sundance, so you know, to me. Um, that's a that's one of the biggest indications that's an independent film, uh, which means somebody had to go in their pockets, empty out their bank accounts uh, to put this film together. And um, if I didn't say that, or maybe I didn't mention that, or maybe you didn't know, uh, you wouldn't tell because across the board, it's a very very solid production. To Clep's yeah. point, what do they do yeah. next if they get the money? I can't even imagine how yeah. everything gets 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 turned up because if this is what you can do on a micro budget, I mean. <laughs> chef come on yes mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah it's a, it's absolutely a must watch and you will have a couple of ways to do so as i mentioned number one theaters folks check it out um this friday may 31st and then shutter who has not had uh released their date yet uh which means it will probably be releasing sometime uh this year and just shout out to um the shutter ifc um under the amc umbrella they did a really good job in marketing this film um i think they have a lot of confidence with it um and and i think uh you should too by everything you've heard today you should definitely want to go out there and see uh johnny with his meat hook uh, and not just the claw from candy man come absolutely scared of that um, and not just yeah. the meat hooks from Dead by Daylight, but yeah. you're going to see the meat hooks in a way that uh, the likes of Scorpion from uh, uh, yes, Mortal yes. Kombat <laughs> likes to do with his. So <laughs> there you go. In the jail, uh, so let them know. Um, there are a lot of early screenings out right now that you can purchase tickets for. I think there's Wednesday and Thursday. I'm going again to see it on Thursday, but there's also a Wednesday out there and some AMCs out there. So Awesome. Yeah, let me just yeah. really quickly, I should... You know, I like to keep things smooth here. But yeah, check check out IFC Films website to get um, any additional information uh, on the release and early screeners and do and, and such. Uh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, yeah. Really enjoyed this film. So uh, with that being said, uh, check out all things Clep has going on with uh, WeAreCritics.com. And you just launched your new brand. So just take yeah. a quick second for that. Yeah, so now we're doing, uh, we have a horror genre thing going now because we, we here at Critics love horror so much that we were like, you know what, we got to showcase it on its own. Let's break it away from all the other stuff, the superhero stuff, the action stuff, the drama stuff, and let's give horror its own platform. So we now have the Scream podcast that's coming. Uh, that's the X you see in the back with Scream. Um, you can find us on Instagram, X Scream Podcast. We're also on Facebook right now, X Scream Podcast, where we're going to be talking. We have a review for this that we did there. Um, with my uh, my partner on this, MC Ghouls. She's um she's gonna be spearheading that thing for us. So make sure you guys check out Extreme Podcast and also check out WeAreCritics.com for more movie news, pop culture, and TV news and all that good stuff. Sounds good, my brother. And Zero, always busy, always everywhere. Y'all know her information is in the description below and the Blurdy Massacre podcast is rocking, rocking each and every week. So just keep up with her. Uh, your new handle now is Z... Z XG. XG. It's just my initials. Yeah, I was like, wait, something changed here. I, I know the original, the I I D K grabber, but nonetheless, yeah, that's in the description below. But yeah, let us know in the comments your your all's excitement, your thoughts, what questions or preparations y'all may need to go for this. None. Nah, just go in there. 
Just yep. straight yeah, go yeah. in there. Go yeah, in there yeah. raw. Just be ready yeah. for it. It's gonna it's gonna be a ride. For everything yeah. we said today, you're still not going to be ready. I promise you. Nope. I promise. And that you. ending is that ending is going to let you just. And that ending, the little <laughs> twist. Hey, I forgot about this. So yeah, you got so much you're going to find uh, find out with this film because man, we said a lot, but we didn't say at all anything. No. <laughs> little do you no. know. Uh, but yeah, come back in the comments and let us know your thoughts about it once you do. But as always, thank y'all so much for checking out reviews here at Big O Belt Media. And we'll see you back very soon with much more content. Hey, 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 hey,